get to the party here in the, in the restaurant. So for starting with your night, we got two different because the allergy. Uh, for this one, it's a radish with the pumpkin seed inside and horse radish. Mm. And outside, you got a small uh, soy glaze with the cam camelina. On this side, nursery trim flour uh, with the aska berries and, and rhubarb. And outside, you got the small MC. For, for this one, it's pretty similar. Inside, exactly the same thing. Uh, pumpkin seeds and uh, horseradish. Outside, it's uh, buttermilk glaze and camelina. Uh, and for the flour, it's uh, ascaberry yogurt with the uh, rhubarb and also uh, MC. So for our next bites, we're actually still with our friend Anthony's farm. So we have here kale from his garden that we season with a smoked vinaigrette on top of for Madame creamy egg yolk and a crispy poultry skin. And for sir, instead of the egg yolk, we actually have a puree of black Jerusalem artichokes. And so do you know what black garlic is by chance? Yes. yes. So it's the same process of fermentation, but we apply it to a Jerusalem artichoke, so quite wow. sweet. So it packs quite a punch. That's awesome. And here we have the same bite. So we actually have cranberry from his neighbor's farm. Cranberry, one of the biggest productions uh, in this vid where the farm is, and we poach them in maple syrup. Around is actually a duck breast prosciutto that we make in house. We salt the breasts for 10 days and then dry them for a month and a half. Serve on top of a mousse of guinea fowl liver and crispy Jerusalem artichoke chip. Wow. Bon appetit. Awesome. Thank you. Since we're heading to Les Torres for the next bite, I went and worked uh, with uh, an inspiration to our martini. Ooh. Since since it's non-alcoholic, usually we use the gin Saint Laurent, but for this one we used a, a product called Seedlip. It's a distillery. It's the only product that we allow ourselves to go overseas for, because oh. uh, all our spirits are from Quebec or Canada. Oh, wow. But this one comes from the UK, and they're the best in what they do, like spirits with no alcohol in it. It uh, just to let you know, uh, a bottle of uh, Seedlip is more expensive than a bottle of Grey Goose. No, they're, 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 they're very, very, very what, good. What's it called? Seedlip. Seed. Okay. And uh, it's in private importation. There's no. There's. There's like maybe three or four places in Quebec that has it. Wow. So uh, we wanted to use this product for the, for the martini. So we went with Seedlip. Uh, worked our homemade apple kombucha, white grape uh, juice that we infuse with rose. And there's also a wash of angelica and uh, wormwood in the glass instead of having a wash of absinthe. Nice. Cheers. Thanks. So hello again. I bring more treats <laughs> for our next service here. I'll start with Madame. So Madame, we have an oyster that we originates from Ile de la Madeleine. We actually have uh, the cucumber in the oyster that we compress for pickling liquid, so a bit of sweet and sour almost. The cucumbers originate from our friend Anthony's farm. And for sir, it's actually a shiitake mushroom grilled on the hibashi grill, so a wood charcoal grill. And we glazed it with a vegetable glaze and powdered with popcorn, a popcorn powder that we season with a few spices that we use the same for the Madame's fish, which is actually a Arctic char ceviche, but without any citrus fruits, because we don't have any in Quebec. So we cooked it in apple kombucha, served on top of a wild rose consomme, and we froze the top layer of liquid nitrogen. For sure, it's a fiddlehead that we lacto-fermented with the wild rose as well. So I'll invite you to have the oyster and the shiitake first, and then use the spoon. Come and break up the ice, get the freshness of the consomme. Bon appétit. Thank you. Thank you. So for our next service here, we wanted to showcase a couple products. First of all, kombu seaweed that I'm holding in my hand. It originates from Gaspésie. Yes, we wanted to keep the natural flavor of the kombu, so we simply roasted it in the oven, make it nice and crispy. On top, we have a gel of sea buck thornberry. Sea buck thornberry is actually this berry right here. Quite acidic. And we finished it off with Konui Japanese. Japanese not Should I take that? I can invite you to take the bite directly. I'll hook the bow, My arm needs a little work out. Yeah, I know. Here we go. Mm. Uh, it's delicious. 
You can open it and you will see inside you have your menu. <laughs> We'll be traveling here in history. We'll be giving you history lessons as we go. Okay? So I'll be right back. We're back in 1608 for your place, sir. When Champlain arrived here in the city, in the point of Quebec here, there was nothing except for forest. And the first thing he asked his men to do was to cut down the walnut trees, the ash walnut trees that were at the point of Quebec. And this was because he needed the wood to build his fort and he needed the space. So, the first plate is around the walnut, the nut of the walnut, the ash walnut. The chef gets them from a plantation out east from here and he transforms the milk, he makes them into a milk, the nuts into a milk, then he passes through a siphon, and so that he expands it, he freezes that in liquid nitrogen, and that's the bottom you have in your plate. You also have Jerusalem artichoke that has been fermented, and you have, but underneath that, you have a fake cheese that is made with sunflower seeds. It's a vegan cheese. Oh, wonderful. And then you have the, uh, the Japanese uh, walnut as a nut that has been crumbled on the top. Wonderful. You also have the sprouts. For you, madam, in your plate, you have we're talking about migration with your plate because we're in the season where things are starting to get ready for their big migration back south. So you have tuna, bluefin tuna in your plate. And the bluefin is served raw. It is heading south now to spend the winter. You have the milkweed bud of the flower right here, the paler green. And the milkweed is eaten by the monarch butterfly. Now the pod is a lot larger and it is full of latex that is indigestible for us. So it has to be cleansed with, and we use marigold oil. The marigold oil is heated up, that's why we have placed the petals. And it gives a very distinct uh, exotic fruit flavor to what you will be eating. And there's also a little bit of watermelon. Enjoy! Bon appetit. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Back in time, in 1686, at the construction of this house, Mr. Lebert came to establish himself on the Saint Hyacinthe. He was a really rich fur trader, and he had part of the North Company, which was a big exportation company. He had products from the Angels, which was a really big deal back in time. And he went to the Saint Hyacinthe because he had a lot of money. This street was called the Wall Street of Canada because of the concentration of banks and insurance companies in that time. So, to represent the noble part of uh, Mr. Leva, you have some caviar in your place. Caviar from the last Nevia, in Trois-Rivia, so from Quebec. You also have slices of um, scallops and a beautiful message one with uh, um, potatoes and butter. For you, you have lamb and cavatelli. Also, you will have Lobster mushrooms. You, there is butter and lobster. Uh, <laughs> you are drinking it. 
You can't touch this at all. Yes, she'll, she'll, she'll tell her. So, this is our version of the butter beer in Harry Potter. Yes, <laughs> that's it's exciting. It's a beautiful one. You have soda in it and an espuma of lobster. Wow, enjoy. Thank you. Madam, sir, to continue with the dish name, the Maritime Dry House. And um, hey, to make a wing to the past of the neighborhood, because the neighborhood was a very important court, Maritime Court. And the first function of this art was uh, to stock several products and especially a maritime product. And this is why uh, the, the chef had chosen a lobster to have it for you. Lobster accompanied with a lobster bisque and her lobster is a duck with a duck juice. Accompanied with a white rice, fava beans, tomatoes. For you, madame, this is a bread with a roast ham and a butter perfume with a sweet grass. Mm. You know sweet grass? No, no, uh, I'm coming in for a show. And for you, some of this is a bread with a roast ham too. And the uh, holly perfume with a sweet grass too. And I'm coming for your show, it's a uh, sweet grass. Thank you. Fun. Smell very, very, very good. You can smell if you want. Vanilla, almond, mm. and your butter. Hello again. How's our evening been going so far? So I'll start with Madame first. So for this dish, we wanted to showcase eel. One of the fish that is actually a, a little known fact about uh, the history of Quebec is that when the French still held Quebec, it's actually the only product that wasn't taxed by the King of France. So people haven't changed much in the years. Back then, as much as today, a lot of people don't like paying taxes. So it was a very popular item. So we actually have the eel here where we actually find a lot less now in Quebec because of a hydro dam that was built many years ago for hydroelectricity. But now uh, because of that, there's a restriction on the eel where we can only fish adult eel to protect the species compared to what we have baby eels, which is a traditional dish in Spain. So we have the eel here that's been confited with a spice name of a red bergamot, which is extremely fragrant. And then we torch the eel with a glaze of damari and strawberry. Damari is the mother soya sauce, a young fermentation of the soy sauce made here in Quebec. Strawberries, of course, come from the island right next to us in Dalian. Not much rain this year, so strawberries didn't grow much. So because of that, they're slightly acidic, which marries perfectly with the eel because it's quite a fatty fish. We have croutons that have been seasoned with an oil of fresh, uh, red bergamot, a few pieces of lettuce to make a bit of freshness, and the gel is actually uncooked gel. That way we keep the freshness and the slight acidity of the strawberry. We won't, don't go get uh, flavors of compote or jam. For sir. We have a dish that we had on the menu, uh, our previous menu of the spring menu. It's actually our cannonball dish, we call it. So the bowl is not broken. It is made this way. It's to represent a cannonball. A, a historic fact on this one is that we wanted to talk about the war of the English and the French that was celebrated, uh, not celebrated, I guess, a war would not be celebrated. That was fought here in Quebec City, where the city fell under over 10,000 cannonballs. The wall that's actually behind me here, we're told by a historian, was struck by a cannonball of 32 pounds and survived the hit. The stone vaults that we're in are original from the days, from eight, uh, 1686. Compared to the houses on top, they were remade in the 60s and 70s because they were completely destroyed and were left in ruins for years. But this is actually from the 17th century? Exactly, the wow. stone vaults. So wow. the ones that we're in right now is from 1686. Where Chef is is actually from 1719. Wow. So we have, it's actually uh, quite wonderful. It's a treasure from the French era. It's uh, quite amazing, I may say myself. So for this dish, we wanted to showcase the changing of the seasons. So we have uh, the cannibals, the war comes and destroys everything. The first, the city rebuilds. So it's like uh, winter comes and kills everything. First spring that come through the, the earth. So we have on the bottom the last vegetable of the year, which is actually cabbage. Cabbage that we fermented in a technique of kimchi. So how to make kimchi? So it's like a sauerkraut, but 
uh, the Korean technique on top. Yeah, the first vegetable of the year, which is actually radishes. First vegetable, never seen a bunch of cooks. So happy to see a radish. Signifies spring is coming. All this underneath lentils, seasoned with a vinaigrette of verjou and some. Uh, we have some. Uh, sorry, the the fresh herbs and oxalis to give a slight acidity. All this underneath a powder of fermented black beets and also a shallot. Here, I come with the last snow of the year, which is actually a snow of pine. So it's actually a pine oil that we infuse to go get a floral side to your dish. There you go, sir. But this is a different tea because in the tea bag you have nettle. And here you have mushrooms. Bouillon. So this is like a consommé but made with mushrooms. It's wonderful. And so the nettles will bring out a very distinct flavor to it. So you leave it infused, let it infuse for a few minutes, not too long. And then leave the bowl for the the bag. Got it. Thanks. This is the same no problem your allergy is <laughs> I think to continue with the dish name fire because they're they're here to make a ring to a uh, pass the neighborhood because the neighborhood has no several major ways of fire and they're uh, this period is very critic because the fur of flame was very important and the environment was very favorable of the development. And the insurance company gave up to cover any damage related to the development. And uh, sorry, the chef has chosen a morel, morel mushroom. Because the morel, this is a mushroom who like grows on the burnt cloth. And um, you will find the quail stuffed with chicken pots, with green peas, foie gras, morel, and onion. And the powder, this is a black shallot. Next drink is uh, like a bloody Caesar or a bloody Mary. Or we make it with uh, bell pepper. Mm. So we make our own bell pepper juice. We add a little bit of chicken stock to it to give it a punch. And then you have um, the homemade spices that go on the rim of the glass. It's um, different peppers, espinet, oh. that are, are in the Goya, and a little bit of dried uh, thyme. Wonderful. So here we are with uh, the last service, or almost the last service. I'll explain to you the ingredients and then I'll explain to you the concept that the chef had for this plate. You have the Swiss chard underneath, uh, you have the venison which has been seared quickly with a little bit of rock salt. You have the chanterelle mushrooms. In your plate, madam, you have the tortellini that are stuffed with the braised venison also. And you have the miss squash. And you have spices that I'll be explaining to you in a moment. Sir, so you have the same ingredients except for the tortellini, no milk in the sauce. You have the rosary potatoes. These are wild potatoes that are not farmed that are uh, hunted for uh, in the forest and they are grow on like on a rope, a string, like a shoelace wow. size and they are, this is a potato wow. and they have more of a taste of chestnut than of potato. They're wild. Yep. Ah, yep. Now the spices are made with bell peppers, yellow, orange and red bell pepper. The yellow, uh, the, the three of them are dehydrated. The chef does nothing to the yellow except for dehydrating and making it into, into powder. The orange is roasted and the red is marinated, pickle style. And so that gives the three different flavors to your bell peppers. Now if you taste just the spices with your fingertip, you'll be able to recognize the bell pepper and the other ingredients also. Mm. Enjoy Benefits and King of Our Lives.
the cheese for Madame. This is the cheese that you have on your plate. It's um, made in uh, on the island called Ile Aux Grues. It's an island 150 kilometers from here, out in the St. Lawrence estuary. The chef wanted an exceptional product. He found this cheese, and it's exceptional in two ways, because the cheese itself, and it is also in, made in collaboration with an artist, a local artist, named Max Seguin. Now, Max Seguin is uh, an artist, a painter, uh, who is very worried and uh, very into what we are not doing or doing with the environment. And so he's making paintings like this, he's producing works like this, where we show some of the terrors that we do to the forest. So in your plate, madam, you have the heart of the cheese, the creamiest part. You have a pesto made with sea parsley. You have rosehip gel. You have the same cheese that is pushed through a siphon. And so it is expanded, it has been oxygenated, and has a second flavor to it. Then you have the bread, which is made with coal, and the tree trunks, the burnt tree, is made with um, dehydrated milk, powdered milk, with a little bit of coal in it also. For you, sir, you have basically the same ingredients, but instead of having cheese for a second, you have uh, a fou fromage. So you have the vegan cheese made with uh, black walnut. You have, still have the pesto, and you have the rose hip and the bread, but everything else is vegan, I would say. Enjoy me. Are we ready for desserts? Yes. Then you have to follow me. We'll go to the Enchanted Forest. But we'll take the long route. We're going this way. Have to take a trip for dessert. Yes. Yeah. So you have a lilac parfait on the bottom with uh, a gel of uh, celery. And I'm going to powder some lilac powder onto it. That's what's sweet, is that? I was going to say for every meal, like cake and that. Never ending. And for you, sir, you have strawberry. Would you like some lilac on it? Absolutely. <laughs> Not going to say no to lilac. And then here I have some summary water, and I'm going to use a very technical term, squish. <laughs> Everybody knows this term, right? Yes. So, squish, squish. And you'll notice it will change color slightly. The lilac will change to a nicer pink. And I don't know what it will do in here, but it's already pink. So I don't know. Let's give it a go. There you go. Excellent. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you very much. This is now our <laughs> infusion homemade of uh, Labrador tea, hops, verbena, we got thyme syrup, mm -hmm. and uh, green strawberry as well. Sounds good. salsa of strawberry, green strawberries, and fennel. And for sure, so it's a sorbet of mint and marika, and everything, no dairy at all. With the same salsa of uh, green strawberries as well. Okay. Oh, wonderful. What's marika? Uh, marika, it's uh, like, uh, it's pine. 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 Yeah. pine. Okay. Great, thank you. Oh, that's delicious. This is the Enjoy. Nice interesting experience. Yeah. So, for the last service, it's a bit like a surprise box, so there's a couple of, uh, of things hidden inside, and it's really up to you to discover it. I just made a, a special one for you, um, so there's some that you can eat, so when there's two, you can eat it, and the one that are, that there's none, 
I see. So only eat it if there are two of them. Exactly. So like this <laughs> one, this one you can eat it. Just I see. Not the other one. Uh, so this one is a, a puff rice muesli with uh, strawberry gel. We have poached cool. peach cool. with cool. uh, amaretto air with uh, hazelnut. <laughs> Uh, after that, there's a raspberry filled with uh, rose gel and covered in um, pumpkin seeds. And at the end, there's a lichen with uh, blueberry gel and blueberry on top. Okay. Thank you. 